Hey guys, Matt Hoos here with Sawhorse and I am at the 1920s house. We have hit an amazing milestone. We finally have all the concrete foundation in place, including the slab and also the grade beams below, below the slab. So let's talk about the journey that, that we took to get here. Now this was not very easy. This is probably the most difficult foundation slab I've ever done. First of all, we decided to do all this with the house in place. We couldn't move the house, we couldn't tear it down because if we did that, we'd have to change the plans because we had setback issues. Plus this is renovation. If you tear it down, it's not a renovation. So the other challenge that we had is we decided to make this a passive house. So with that, we've got different control layers. We have to have thermal control layers, radon, all kinds of crazy things. So I wanna start, start from the ground up and talk through how we created this. So first, tap like and smash the subscribe button. Let's look at the demolition phase. We took out everything that was in place. We took out the framing. We took out the, the foundation wall and we completely rebuilt the foundation wall on three sides. Now on the front wall, we decided to leave it. We decided to do shotcrete there because if we took that out, the house would have fallen down. Plus we had a front porch, so we wanted to keep in place. We basically got it down to the dirt, Georgia red clay, um, made sure it is, everything was compact. We got all the debris out. We had three or four different layers. Now we decided to make the basement all one level. Now we still have a ledge, so we need to leave this ledge in place, mostly for structural reasons. But for the most part, the basement is flat and level now. So starting with the dirt, made sure everything was level compacted, had an engineer come out, and he also tested all the footings to make sure that we have good compaction in the footings. And also that when he did a probe test, and he also did a torque test, which I haven't seen them do before, we made sure that we had the right PSI in the footing so there's not gonna be any issues in the future, cracking foundations or anything like that. So once we got all the dirt out of the way, the next control, the next layer that we had to do worry about was putting down a geotech mat. Now, the reason we put this down is because typically you can put gravel down and you pour a slab on top of that and you have a vapor barrier. Because we have so many different control layers so we didn't want them to mix with each other, we put the geotech mat down first, then we put the gravel. Now the gravel was in place mostly for the radon system. The radon system uh, needed something to breathe and the gravel with the geotech mat pre uh, preventing the dirt from entering into the gravel layer. You've got basically gravel which is uh, structural and it also breathes. You have air in between the gravel. So what this allows the, the vents and the radon to do is we've got a passive system. These vents are going to be able to take any gases moisture and whatnot from the gravel layer into the vents and out through the roof. Now, this is the passive system. Um, we, I, I've got a picture of the pipe in there and the, the difference between an active and a passive system is this is designed to not have to have a fan. Now, if we do test and we do have radon in the future, we can add a fan if necessary. However, this fan is designed just to use nature, uh, Bernoulli's principle, which is basically if wind blows across the house, it creates a negative pressure underneath the slab because this pipe is going to go all the way through the roof. So we talked about the dirt layer, geotech mat, then we have the, the gravel. Now on top of the gravel, uh, we are going to put the insulation. So a lot of people get confused about this. They usually think the vapor layer, then they have the thermal control layer. Well, we put the rock wool insulation and this is comfort board 80. We use the comfort board 110 below the slab because it has a higher compression rate and we put four inches of insulation all throughout the slab, except where we had the grade beams. And I'm gonna talk about that in a separate video, how we can design, you know, in the future, a better slab where you don't have to worry about grade beams in there. But for now, let's talk about the, the rock wool insulation. The reason you want this below the slab is because if you're creating a passive house, you want insulation on all six sides. Now typically you insulate the walls, usually inside the walls, you insulate maybe the ceiling or the roof line. However, this is going on the outside of the uh, outside of the structure. So below the slab, on the outside of the foundation walls, on outside of the framing, and on top of the roof. But the first, we need to make sure that we're we put the insulation below the slab. If we don't do that, then the, the other insulation you can have that heat gain or that heat loss, depending on what time of the year it is, through the slab into the ground. Um, now with this. The, the ground is typically around, let's just say 58 to 60 degrees, depending on what climate zone you're in. That is pretty cold to the touch. Now, if you're walking across this slab with this rock wool in place, it's going to be room temperature, which is much nicer to the feet and also helps with your energy bills.
Now on top of the rock wall, we have our vapor control layer. Now the vapor control layer, we use Stego Home for this one. Um, Stego Home is a 15 mil plastic made by Stego. It's their Stego Home product. It's that green product that you saw with the red tape, kind of looks like the holidays. Now with this, we made sure it was fastened to the foundations, fastened to the footings. We also wrapped it up the wall behind me. So before we put the shot queen in place, we put the Stego Home all the way up to the very top. That way if any moisture comes from the outside it's going to hit that it's going to hit our gravel layer below it's, it's continuous we've got a continuous sheet from the front to the back with the seams now we use many different things to to mend the seams we use a double stick tape the double tack tape that they have the stego tack tape and we also use the red tape to tape over the seams now along the foundation or where, where we're hitting an uneven surface we use some of their mastic so all the way all the way around the side we use their mastic and we use the tape. So in each joint, we have at least mastic plus tape, or we have the double tack tape plus the regular Stego, Stego home tape to make sure that we've got a complete barrier all the way around. Now, on top of this, um, we made sure that this was sealed all the way around. I personally went through and made sure there's no penetrations. Like when the rebar was put in, uh, they made a couple holes in the front wall. So I, I came out one evening and made sure all that was tightened up. So we've got a complete vapor barrier from the front of the house to the back of the house. Now what this is gonna do is not only does it take care of the vapor, but also takes care of the radon. So the, these radon control layers, so radon, um, if you have the vapor control layer, what this allows it to do with concrete on top, and I was told radon is best with, the radon control is best with the concrete on top. Basically it's gonna bounce around, it's not gonna have any air leakage into the house through the slab, any moisture leakage, or any, any other soil gases that are coming through into the house because we've got a complete seal all the way around. And it's gonna find its way through the gravel, the, basically the air in the gravel, to the radon pipes and go through the roof. So anything that is collecting behind me, which is the, 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 front, the front of the house, or anything that's below the slab is going to hit those control layers, go through the pipes and go through the roof. Now, finally, on top of that, we've got our we, we had spec for four inches of concrete. I think we ended up pouring about six inches of concrete. And I think we had spec for 10 inches of shot creep behind me. I think we ended up doing 12 to 14 just to make it a little bit stronger. So we've a little bit over engineered this house, but we don't want to take any precautions. I'd love to thank all of the partners that have helped us to date, especially for everything below the house. So starting with Rockwell, you can see their product behind us. They are our thermal control layer for the whole house and they are a thermal partner for this house. I wanna thank Clean Vapor for assisting us with the radon design, putting the pipes in and also helping with that vapor control layer. I also wanna thank Stego Home for partnering with us. Their complete vapor control layer is gonna make sure that we don't have any moisture coming from the slab inside the house and it's also gonna help with radon. Tap like and smash the subscribe button.